everything going with you? Well, what I'm going to go over in this video is going to be the formed elements that make up our blood, namely the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the platelets. Here you can see our superheroes that are within our bloodstream that protect and defend us from all types of malicious uh, antigens out there that are trying to destroy our body and, the, and these guys are protecting us every single day so i like to go over a uh, uh, over these white white blood cells now it can get very complicated so i'm just going to go briefly on each one and um, also back there you can see the red blood cell and the uh and a platelet back there as well okay i couldn't fit this in my frame in front of me here so i put it in, in the back of the frame here Okay, so this is an order of percentages of white blood cells. So in a one drop of blood, partition the white blood cells. 60% of those white blood cells are going to be neutrophils, okay? There's a range usually associated with this, but I'm just rounding it off, okay? So to make it a little bit easier to memorize, and from there, if you need to adjust the range, it's up to you. So 60%, half of 60 is 30%. So we have neutrophils, lymphocytes, 30%. Then here we have 5%, which are monocytes, which are the largest of the white blood cells. Then we have uh, half of 5%, it's 2.5%, which is eosinophil. And then finally, our last white blood cell will be the, um, the basophil, okay? Now, a mnemonic to help you memorize these, you can say, uh, never let monkeys eat bananas, okay? Here's um, some things that you may notice right away. Here you have the, uh, the granulocytes. Okay, they have these little granules. And these are agranulocytes. Okay. Now these two would be referred to as a specific immunity. Okay. Immature lymphocyte would be the bigger one. Okay. The immature has more cytoplasm. And the immature lymphocyte, or the more streamlined, is the, has less of a cytoplasm. Okay, so let's start getting into some functions of this. Okay, so the neutrophils. Neutrophils are multi-lobed, okay? They stain with acidic and basic dyes, are going to be macrophages. They engulf and kill bacteria, fungi, and some viruses via defenses, okay? Now let's go to lymphocytes. Lymphocytes uh, have a round nucleus, a granulocyte, and it's part of the specific defense. There's three functional classes of lymphocytes, T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells. All right, so that's for lymphocytes. Here you have the monocytes. Monocytes are the largest of all the, um, uh, of all the white blood cells, and this thing can engulf about a hundred bacteria at the same time. It has a kidney bean shaped nucleus and a granulocyte and a phagocyte. And this would be considered a macrophage, okay, as well as a neutrophil, both macrophages. Macrophages means that they eat uh, pathogens. They can engulf bacteria, fungi, and parasites. Very busy eaters, okay? So that's it for monocyte. Let's go into eosinophil. And eosinophil is uh, stains acidic. It's got a bilobed nucleus, anti-inflammatory. Also what these guys can do is that they can destroy parasitic worms. They bore a hole in the parasitic worm with some chemicals and just take the life right out of that parasitic worm. And then finally here we have a basophil. Okay, basophils are another bilobed nucleus. This, this one stains the basic dyes and inflammatory. It's, it causes inflammation. Um, it releases heparin, histamine, and serotonin. Uh, the histamine is what causes that inflammation. Okay, So these two guys are antagonists to each other. This one inflames and this one causes, reduces inflammation. All right, so that's pretty much it for the white blood cells without going further into detail. Uh, pretty much covered all the bases. I have another model here that I can show you. Uh, okay, so let's look at these. These are the most numerous, the neutrophils. Okay, all these are neutrophils. No, nope, except for that one. Neutrophil, neutrophil. Kind of like a clear, let's see if you can see it. 
Let's see if I can get a little bit closer here. Okay. So notice here, these look like it, but these have more like an orange color to it. This one's clear. So those are the neutrophils. Okay, let's go to the lymphocytes. And I would say that this is the mature lymphocyte and this is the immature lymphocyte. Okay. Monocytes. Okay, so monocytes would be these here. Doesn't really do justice because they're supposed to be the biggest ones. They're almost like twice the size of everything else. Um, so these are the monocytes here. Yeah. Monocytes. Okay, let's go then to the eosinophil, which would stain uh, red. Uh, in this case, in this model, it would be orange dots. Okay, so let's, it should be red, but here you see the orange dots here and uh, up here and over here. So these three are eosinophils. Okay, and then finally, here you have the basophil, which will have the black dots or the blue dots right here. So those will be the basophil. That'll be the basophil there, and I believe there's only one basophil here. I mean, it's less than 1%, so at least they did that accurately on this model. Okay, so that's all there for the white blood cells. Let me show you another model, I mean, another diagram here. This one here. So here you see the neutrophils, multinucleated. Look at this one here, a lot of nuclei, many nuclei. So that's the neutrophil. Let's go to the lymphocytes. The, oh, this is an eosinophil. They didn't kind of do these in order percentages, but here you see the eosinophils. You can see how the dots are red in there because the stain's acidic. Okay. Look at the basophil with the blue dots or black dots. The stain's basic dyes. Okay. Here you see the lymphocyte, a very pronounced nuclei. Look at that nucleus, very pronounced, very thin halo of cytoplasm going around that big pronounced nucleus. This one looks like it's a, uh, uh, a mature one. And over here on this side, looks like it's immature. Okay. And then finally, we have the last one here, which is the monocytes, which are the largest of the white blood cells okay, in the bottom here. Very big, very big cell. Okay, so let's get into next now the, um, the the red blood cells. Okay, got some nice little statistics, little facts that I that I made up here in this sheet. Okay, I want to look at it real quick. Okay. Uh, but um, but erythrocytes, these guys are responsible for transporting gases such as carbon dioxide and oxygen to and from tissues and lungs. One drop of whole blood, just one drop, contains 250 million red blood cells. Okay? There are 25 trillion, with a T, 25 trillion red blood cells in total in our body. Whole blood contains about 1,000 red blood cells for each white blood cell. 1,000 for every one of these. Red blood cells also make up one third of all the cells in our body. They're formed in red bone marrow. They travel 700 miles in 120 days. Check out this last one. Three million new red blood cells enter the bloodstream. Not one day, not one hour, not one minute, every second. 3 million new red blood cells are produced every second. Okay, so these are incredible, incredible cells in our body. On this landscape here of the white blood cells and red blood cells, here you can see the red blood cells. Okay. All right. I want to go over this blood typing with you here. This is the ABO system, okay? The A blood type here is going to have these little surface markers called A antigens. A antigens on the red blood cell gives it the characteristic of A blood type. Here's the B antigens on the B blood type. The AB has both A and B, and the O has neither. Okay. Now, antibodies also are associated with the red blood cell. 
So let's say if you have A blood type, you're going to have B antibodies circulating around your body. The B blood type is going to have A antibodies. Now here you have the AB blood type. Okay. AB blood type, you have A and B antigens, but it doesn't have any antibodies. Then here you have the O blood type. Okay. O blood type has no antigens, but it has A and B antibodies. All right, so um, let's just look at here for the A antigens or the A blood type. You have the A blood type can accept from A or O. The B blood type can accept from B or O. The AB blood type can accept from A, B, A, B, and O. And the O can accept from O. Okay. For the A blood type, the A can donate to A and AB. The B blood type can donate to B and AB. The AB blood type can donate to AB. And the O blood type can donate to any blood. That's, called, that's why it's called a universal donor. The last thing I will talk about here is just a, a platelet, which I had here initially. All right. So here's the platelet. Okay. These are like our natural band-aid. If we ever get any cuts in our body, these platelets go from the inside and adhere to the to the cut to the cut wall, and it holds from the inside out and prevents the blood from escaping your body. And it's uh, formed by the megakaryocyte. Okay, so that's pretty much a video on all the white blood cells and the red blood cells and platelets in our body. Um, hopefully, I can get, I gave you an idea of of uh, of the formed elements in our body. That's all I have. Check you out on the next video. Take care. Bye.